All right, my beautiful YouTube, I'm making this video and it's featuring the chat. So I didn't even tell them I'm gonna record right now. I said get ready, but they didn't know. The video started. So everybody, you guys can come on here. The real OG, stick around. We kept it going. We're on like, look at, they're talking Citron, this, that. We got polls during the day. So here are the results. We could see people think a gap up or a cuck fest and people thought that's for Monday. People think that today was going to go down. We see the markets are down. It's going up. But I want to talk about why did the market come down today. And I have a few things to bring up. So make sure you guys are on the stream. So the Colt. Oh, look, you guys are saying, oh, hi, YouTube. Colt gang. Yeah, yalla, gang. There you go, baby. So, and if you guys want to find the stream every day, um, well, markets open Monday through Friday. That is what we're going to be on. And it's YouTube.com slash the stock market so it's pretty easy to find now but the market went down because of shanghai so here's the shanghai composite it's kind of a little bit like uh this is the i'm on the one year chart and i have this up to show because this was one of the bigger drops we've seen the biggest drop in 2019 and it was a pretty big dump and we saw that our markets came down and you guys could see here a lot of the action happened in the morning it gapped down went up a little dropped and now it's going up but the reason is why. And now I'm going to show you guys some of the charts that I'm talking about um, and some of the data that came out because a lot of people, their first thoughts today was non-farm payrolls. It was awful. It was a big miss. So I'm going to address that because the big thing with non-farms that it, it has central bank implications, but also the same thing we saw in the China data is getting reflected through the non-farms where this data is now just coming out. This is what happened, and, and the Chinese data shows the same thing that happened in February 2018 when we saw the huge volatility in March 18, when that was the first time we saw started to see the tariffs take place. So realistically, this is the first bad non-farms print, the worst since 2017. This is just highlighting that we were kind of insulated from the tariffs up until this point now it's affecting jobs and manufacturing and now when you see what happened with china and their manufacturing it doesn't mean that we are insulated completely it just means we were ahead but now some of these data is coming out it's kind of been lagging so that's the the one thing with non-farms but that's not the main reason the market has done this and really i've been telling these guys on stream everyone's asking what's going to happen we expect a it to come down here in March somewhat, but it's not just going to come straight down. So if you're trying to trade it, you can't just buy a long-term put, you know, that's, that's going to be for another video. We'll make it this weekend or, or come talk to me on stream about that. But I've been saying since the beginning of March, the market has been leaving us breadcrumbs. If you watch through my videos, everything from Venezuela to the ECB the other day, and now this, and even Monday with some of the trade talks and stuff. So there's the Shanghai composite, but that's not the main point I'm going to look towards. And in chat, if you guys are listening, I'll come back to you guys once I go over this, and you guys could put your thoughts for the people on YouTube. And everybody on YouTube, interact too. I want to know your guys' thoughts. Do you think I'm an idiot? Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think I'm right? Do you see something I missed or that you could literally add to? I'd love to hear it. And also, you guys who listen three minutes in, like the video. I appreciate it. It'll make sure you see these videos. It goes a long way too. So love you guys. All of you are the best. But let me show you this. The next thing I'm gonna show you is the dollar. This is gonna relate to China. It's not the actual data, but this is the one minute on the dollar. And if you notice, it looks almost identical to the SPY today. And I brought this up on stream for the guys. It's starting to go up. This this chart's a little delayed, so you can't use it in real time. But the dollar reached highs, I believe, yesterday, all-time highs in 2019. Oh, come on, I think I might need to refresh that. Give it a sec. So let's go to the daily on the dollar. But this is going to have an effect. This and even rates. Rates in the dollar is going to start factoring in the market. And I made the video on the yield curve. But you saw last time around October, November, when the yield curve inverted slightly on the two and the fives, how the market reacted. What happens with the dollar and bonds is important. But the dollar reaching new highs is going to be something I'm watching. If it does go up and then comes down. But... I'm saying I'm talking too much in the future of what I'm looking at. Let's see what actually happened. This was the worst data for China. It was historically bad. And what I mean by that, this was the largest month over month drop for their exports ever or imports, excuse me. And that's what they're buying. So here is the balance of trade. And you'll notice that they only reported a, a $4.1 billion surplus 
which is after, you know, they, they, that means they sold $4 billion more of goods than they bought. And that's not typical of China, as you see. It was even expected they were going to have a $26 billion surplus, but they only did four. So putting that in perspective, it's bad. And let me show you a 10-year chart, and we'll get some columns, maybe even a five-year. Well, really, here's the chart. Anytime you notice the surplus is dropped, it correlates, again, that time in March, the first time the tariffs actually started to take an effect. And then around 2016, uh, around Europe, uh, Brexit and the election. And before that was 2014, the oil crisis, and then 2012 and all the other stuff. But you notice we didn't go negative yet for China, but this is bad because if this is the one right before it goes negative, again, you, we really haven't seen it that low. You did get one right here and it bounced, but that was literally August, uh, to, or right before August, the flash crash of 2015. So this is something to look out for. This is important why the market went down today, but that's why I kept talking so much of the future because where this can go is also now important too because this is these this data, and I, and I kept saying it on the stream today, trading off trade data like this is interesting because I'm going over balance of payments and really what these big misses, this surplus, and what it means in the context there's something called a balance of payments adjustment. So when countries, you know, their trade gets out of whack like this and working with other countries, they have to change either the currency or their production and trade. And this is where it gets sticky because countries don't want to do this. And there's there's costs, there's domestic costs. So that's a lesson on, on let me know if you guys comment below if you want me to make a, a lesson on this because this is stuff, it's not it's market related, but it's really economical stuff. It, it, you know, something, it's not give me the trade, give me the trade. It's not like that. So hopefully you guys see where I'm coming from. But here is the exports now. Their exports again expected 10% Last time it grew 15%, it only grew 5%. Again, this was a huge miss too. And exports is, is important because, well, that's what they're selling. But that wasn't the big one yet, but just yet. But as you see here, putting it on the chart, exports drop only at specific times. But the fact is, if these start to go down, it's showing pretty much the cracking in the data. But now here's the clear one, imports. You guys will see this one. This one, again, was expected at 14%. Previous was 21% growth. It only grew 3%, which is saying, and on top of this, let me clarify before I show that chart on all of this data, even though we could go back in time and say, this happened, that happened, yada, yada, yada. The real key is that China, and I made a video on this, they injected more capital than ever. They issued their quantitative easing is what I called it. And by having that quantitative easing, and seeing numbers like this, this is bad. And then now the non-farms confirms it. And then ECB yesterday cutting their rates and lowering future forecast growth is kind of my yield curve video. I think people know what's going on, um, but it takes time for the markets to reflect. We had a funny little boat example <laughs> today too. But now going back, here's the imports. Let's throw it up on the 10-year. And here's the columns. But now you'll see it. You haven't seen a drop this big ever. It may look like that, but a one month to one month drop like this, it, it's it's hitting a lows literally. You're you're backtracking almost a decade in trade realistically when it comes down to it. So these are all the important data points. This is what happened and this is why the markets went down. It's gonna be volatile. You guys are seeing where it's at. So actually let's see this now. Chat guys. So I haven't look you guys are seeing my screen chat, so I haven't gone up. What do you guys think? Oh, you guys, look at these guys are just talking about the, they're not even listening to me. I bought three puts for Netflix, CNBC, watch out, big battle, level two flying. I expected the S&P to fall. Dude, look at these guys, man. These guys, man, they're, oh, Venezuela. Yes, you are an idiot. Oh, man, that's that's bad. Join the cult. <laughs> Josh has all the answers. So even then, you guys see, I love the stream. That's why you guys should come on here. Everybody from all, all types of backgrounds. Yeah, we don't need you. There you go. See, they don't even like me, you guys. So it's a good free chat room for everybody to discuss. So simple as that, man. You guys got to get in here, uh, interact. That, yeah, you guys, screw you guys. Watch the video. I'm going to make them comment on it, man. They're just literally, and I love it, though. I'm making a video. They're focusing on the market. So you guys see it's a cool community there. But that's why I want you guys on the chat. But 
everybody in there, everybody watching this video, I've said it before, I'll say it again, we're sourcing information. So answer the polls too. Do you think which was more responsible? Do you think it was China or do you think it was the non-farm payrolls? What do you expect to happen on Monday? So I'm going to leave it there, you guys. Uh, I love you. Hopefully this helps. Uh, make sure you check out the live streaming channel. We have the stock trading course, too, and the real estate stuff. But actually, we had a huge real estate rant, and I can't give away the secret. But if you watch the live stream channel, you might find it. So I love you guys. Stay in school. Stay active. Stay healthy. Stay positive, too, You know, especially in these markets, man. October to now lost a lot of people. Their excitement got murdered. You guys, you know, some people are still bitter about it. Uh, you know, if you lost money, I lost money too. A lot of people lose money, but it's it's really where you go from there. And it's not about getting the, the intelligent investor. It's not about where you, you cross the finish line before someone. It's do you make enough money to meet your needs? Are, are you getting there and making a plan and reaching and achieving that goal? So at the end of the day, that's that. So Market's going to have 45 minutes here. Hopefully, you guys will see this before then or around close. We'll love your thoughts. I will see you guys on Monday. Peace.